Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today is December 9th. Uh, happens to be my birthday. Um, and uh, I'm just thankful that uh, God has blessed me to be alive today. Amen. The Bible said that death, the dead know nothing. <laughs> um, and those that die in Christ, um, our next thing would be with Jesus. Amen. So anyhow, Thank you for joining us. This is this is the third installation or part three. Um, I had uh, put the last one, A New and Living, New and Living Way, um, part two. Um, so, and we had, we had talked of some scriptures and stuff, then said, Lo, I come to do thy will, God. He taketh away the first uh, to establish the second. We're talking about the old law. Uh, Jesus came to move the old law out bring in the new law. Uh, one of the important things that people kind of are not taught, uh, they don't pick up, is that while Jesus was here, he was under the old law. He had to, uh, many say, well, Jesus came to fulfill the law. Um, the part of fulfillment of the law that Jesus came was that he came. <laughs> uh, he didn't have to do, he wasn't here to do the commandments and and and, and justify commandments of the law. He was here to be Jesus, uh, the prophesy, uh, Messiah to come. <laughs> That's why he said in the, in the synagogue that he said, he read Isaiah. Um, and, and when he did, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So what he was saying, this is completed. I have fulfilled the law. This is me. I am the Messiah. I've come. Uh, so when, when people say, oh, he came to fulfill the law, he came to fulfill what was prophesied of him. And once he did that and to take it to a tree, amen, our sins. And that's why when he was on the cross, when he gave the last breath, he said, it is finished. Amen. What was finished? The law, the old law was finished. Now the new covenant, amen, the new testament, the new covenant, amen, was now in force because the testator has passed and now uh, the, the will could move forward. Amen. So don't misunderstand that. The Bible said, study to show thyself. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, approved unto God. Amen. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, that word study uh, is, is, if you look at the uh, Hebrew word, uh, to know, uh, to investigate, to search out, amen. So uh, give devotion to, um, and, and I would say that the study here is to find truth, amen. And the Bible said, Jesus said that when the Holy Ghost, when the Comforter has come, which is the Holy Ghost, he will lead you and guide you into all truth, amen. So we look at that, uh, we're, we're, we're comforted today that, through the Holy Ghost, when we study, we apply ourselves to the Word of God. He said that the Holy Ghost would bring to our remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So studying uh, the, the Scripture, Amen. He said, "For search the Scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life." Amen. So we must get what we can from God um, in in those things, and we have to believe Him, and we have to have faith. We have to exercise that. Um, this thing don't work without faith. This thing don't work without believing. Amen. So, uh, today I wanted to talk about the incorruptible inheritance. Amen. Uh, we know sin equals death. We know the gospel equals salvation. Um, we know righteousness in Christ leads to the inheritance. Amen. So he is the propitiation, amen, the sacrifice, the acceptable uh, thing to God, who is Jesus Christ for our sins, amen. So he is the only thing that appeases God to forget our sins, amen. It was God manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, received up in the glory, amen. That is God in the face of Jesus Christ. He prepared for himself a body, took it to the tree for the whole world, amen. For God so loved the world that he gave, 
Amen. Amen. Praise God. In the sonship of a body hast thou prepared for me, he said. And uh, he came as a babe lying in a manger. What's different about Jesus is that there was no earthly father. There was no carryover from the sin of Adam. Amen. That is the, the one thing. It was God. It was the Holy Ghost that overshadowed a virgin Mary. Amen. And he came uh, flesh. Amen. And dwelt among us. Amen. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. So just it's so exciting to know that beyond the grave, amen, if that's the way we go, or if we meet him in the air, that we have something beyond the breath that we breathe today in the natural. Amen. So I am very excited. Amen. I, I would be very um, saddened to think that today turns another year for me and that I'm one step closer to the end. But you know, the end in Christ for the natural is just the beginning for the saints, amen, for his bride, amen. So I am very excited, amen, that uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live this life the best I know how in Christ and with my family, and, and we are going to just enjoy one another while we're here, amen. We're, we're, we're going to take whatever comes, and we're going to make the best of everything we've got to deal with or work with, amen. So in Christ, amen, there's no condemnation to those that walk in Christ Jesus, amen. So I am happy. I hope you're happy, and I hope that you have found that promise, amen. He said that the uh, promise lest the promise being left that any of you should come short of it. Amen. So it, it is not an option to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the promise. Amen. This is the rest wherewith he will cause the weary to rest. Amen. Praise God. Now his own people, we came and they re rejected him. Amen. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. So Acts 1 and 8, ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Praise God. And we, there's, there's a whole lesson on that. Um, listen to some of our other videos on, on YouTube. Um, we, we do go into those things. So anyhow, I, again, I am so happy. Dear God, we just pray that you would move on this message this morning. We pray, God, that your servant's heart, God, would be attuned to you, God, and that you have prescribed, God, for the listeners, God, what they need to hear from you, and God, to be encouraged, God, to know, God, your way of salvation. And God, I praise you, God, and I just ask you, God, to lead my mind, my heart, amen, and, and, and let the words that, that your servant speaks be what you wanted to say, God. And I just thank you, Lord. Amen. Help me to be a vessel unto honor, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So one of the things that I, I wanted to say um, here at the beginning um, is that if you and many have, and, and many have been um, disheartened um, by what they may have looked at and read, um, if you go into studies, if you go into studies about um, who wrote the Bible? Who wrote the, 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 the books of the Bible? Um, what's out there is very erroneous. Amen. Um, some of it is half-truths. But understand that what you're going to find out there, and, and when you, you say, well, you know, well, in today, we've got people messing with Google. We've got people messing with, they're, they're writing their own meanings. Um, they're, they're changing everything. So um, it, it, and this, this, this has probably been written many, many years ago. And, and, and uh, the authentication of, of, of some of these sayings and things is probably years old because the devil has been here. <laughs> uh, so long before we were, um, he has been pushing man to, to be corrupt and to uh, erase the name of Jesus, amen. So what, what you would find today, if you were to search, amen, and, and if you were to really put your, pour yourself into searching, what you're going to find is, and there's a whole level, there's an evil level that says this is, this is just a fairy tale, it's just all made up, um, there, there's nothing to it, we, they can't even find where Jesus was ever born, what this, this, 
Jesus that we, we that is written about was was ever in existence. It was just a made up um, thing, and, and and all these things. And, and and I want you to know right now that, <laughs> as I said on the on the last uh, part two of, of our message that I that I did last week, is that. I know in whom I have believed. You experience this. See, the Bible's been around, amen, so long. And and, and it is the number one uh, selling book uh, that has ever been and probably ever will be. I'm sure of that, uh, God willing. Uh, but anyhow, and I know he is because it's his word, but he said his word shall never pass away. And and this, this thing is... If you apply faith, if you believe, amen, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you seek him with your whole heart, he said, I will be found. Now, this is the key. If you're just reading it and, and, and you're not willing to apply it, you're, you're, it's just another book to you and, and, and it's not going to come alive. And, and you, you will probably side with these people that say it's just another story. Amen. But if you apply faith in the word, the living word, and I say living because it is alive, it will, amen, speak to you. God will, will move through and on you and in you through his word, and he will bring that spirit of the Holy Ghost upon you, and, and you shall receive that power from on high. Amen. So I'm telling you right now, the, the greatest thing, the, the, the reason this has existed is because it's alive. Amen. If you apply yourself to it, you will feel God. You will, you will see him move. Amen. He will, he will talk to you. He will instruct you. Amen. He will be as real as anything you've ever known to be real. Amen. And I have experienced that. That's why I'm here. That's why I know in whom I have believed. That's why I'm here today. That's why I'm teaching. That's why I'm telling you, you must believe. Amen. You must be baptized. He said, he that is, is, is baptized, amen, believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. So, um, except a man be born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter or see the kingdom of God. You'll find that John 3, 1 through 8, amen, 9, amen. So, John 3, 16, that same chapter, for God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, amen. That is, amen, true, amen. And, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, amen. How do you call upon the name of the Lord? Amen, you, you are Somebody is going to tell you about Jesus. Somebody's going to promote the gospel, the good news. Amen. Like I'm doing right now. I'm telling you about Jesus and you'll tell others about Jesus. Amen. And you, you, you've heard. Amen. And, and there's no one like Jesus. There's his disciples would never come close to him. Amen. He said that you will do greater works. He didn't say you'd be greater. Understand that. Very very important because we've got whole organizations that chose not to call themselves by Jesus but by apostles. He said you would do greater works. Works. Greater could be because they're going to live longer. It's going to multiply because there is you're passing it on. Amen. So however he meant that, he said that you will do greater works. You will never be greater. And that's where some people have it wrong. And uh, God helped them to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen in that. Um, but, but I just want you to know we are not justified by the law of Moses. Amen. We're not justified by the old law. The old law cannot mix. We, we had a message on new wine. Amen. And uh, you, you can go listen to that. Praise God. But you can't mix the two. They, they do not mix, amen. He said you can't put new wine in old bottles, amen. And, 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 and so we, we've got to understand that this new law, this new and living way, amen, that Jesus gave us, praise God, amen. So <clears throat> having therefore boldness to enter into the holiest of holies, into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. This is Hebrews 10 and, and 9 uh, and... Uh, Anyhow, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, 
that veil. I'm not going to go into all that again. You go back and listen to those other ones. Uh, but but again, back to the thing. If you were to search this out, if you was to say, where did it all come from? Um, you know, you, you're gonna you're gonna find out there right now that that you know they're gonna say that um, these things were were not even written till about 50 50 uh, um, A.D. after the death of Jesus. Uh, 70. Some of them are saying it doesn't even start till 60 or 70 after his death. Uh, we got Paul's writings. Uh, from what I have been able to gather and what is out there, um, they're, they're saying basically Paul is the only one that uh, they can validate, and, and he's about seven, eight books of, of, the, of the scripture. There's 27 in the New Testament. Uh, they, they don't know the authors of, of the uh, Gospels and the rest of the books, uh, Hebrews, they attribute to Paul. Um, and it wasn't until 320, 25 AD, the Council of Nicaea, um, that uh, they actually put names on the books of the Bible. That, that, that's when they became Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and, 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 and named the rest of the 27 books. Uh, they attributed them to uh, what they could find. Uh, so when you look and you study that out, um, and then you see these mockers and these, these uh, detractors that say, you know, it's, it's just a, a story. But one of the greatest things that we have today as a believer in Christ is we feel him. We live, move, and have our being in him. Amen. We know that he is here. He said even looking out, amen, to the, to the to this creation is, is validation that God exists. Uh, but we feel him. Amen. I've never spoken another time, never learned another language. Amen. And when the Bible shows me time after time that people that received the Holy Ghost began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Amen. There's nobody around me. There's no influence. There was no uh, chip in my head that, that upgraded me to be able to speak another language. Amen. And I say chip in your head because we're right around the corner from all this crazy stuff. Amen. So if you if you were a techie and you begin, you watch the latest stuff and what's going on, uh, there, there's, it's coming soon. I mean, we got a cell phone that's going to link with your your skull. Amen. And neuro, <laughs> there's just some crazy stuff that's right around the corner. That mark of the beast is so easy to come in. The AI, all these things. Amen. So just in those things, I mean, we are more, we are closer to Jesus than we've ever been, my friend. Um, so when you look at all this stuff, and I'm just trying to encourage you that when you hear the detractors, when you hear those that say, you know, it's just a fairy tale and, and, and you know, you might as well just live it up here because this is it. This is not it, my friend. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Um, and, and when you look, you see that they're you know, there are so many things, and I, I, I tell you, you know, I, I, there was church in the book of Acts. I know I have, I have talked, and I still say today that church is not a requirement. If you go to church, that's fine, but I, what I am emphasizing is that when you sit under people that are preaching the old law, trying to mix and blend it into the new law. The old law is fine to help us to understand the character of God, but these are not commandments that we do today. Amen. If if they match up to what Jesus said and what the New Testament talks about and, and, and they overlap, that's fine. But don't be, be doing the old law stuff. That's not for us. You're not a Jew. Amen. And if you are, that that's that's you you you're probably not even believing in Jesus today because they don't. If you're a devout Jew, you don't believe Jesus. You just think he's another prophet. He was a prophet. Uh, many don't even believe that he ever he ever existed. So you don't want to be a Jew. You don't want to be in that. That you're not a called Jew. Your bloodline is not that. We become spiritual Jews by by the our circumcision of baptism in Jesus' name. We have taken on the name of Jesus, not Moses. We're not under the law. Uh, we have a great privilege today, amen. So I, I want you to know that we have something that no other generation, no other uh, timeline has ever had access to, the faith in Jesus, amen. So when you look at that, um, 
and and I was going to talk a little bit about Paul, but I'm not going to I'm not going to go much into that. I'll, I'll save it for another time. Paul had a heavy influence on 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 scripture and things like that. And again, um, when you go study those those who wrote what and you know all that stuff, um, none of that none of that matters when I read the scripture. And, he, and Jesus says in John 3, 1 through 8, when he's talking to Nicodemus and he says, you know, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit. And, and, and let me just go to that real quick because I, I really think it's, it's, it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, John 3, so when you look at that, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again. This is verse 3 of, of chapter 3 in John, St. John. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? He can, can he enter a second time and have some other womb? And he be born. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, here we are. We're talking about spirit and flesh. We have to serve God. He said, he said that the time will come and now is when, when the Father seeketh those that worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. This is where we're at. So, and, and Jesus said in verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. He said, the wind bloweth. Here's the clue. Here, here's, here's, the, here's the little... Uh, um, clue that he's given of what's about to come. Amen. When when he told Peter, he said, thou art Peter and upon this rock, upon the confession of your faith in who I am, I will, <laughs> he said, you're, you're, you're going to have the keys to heaven. And he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And he wasn't talking about a natural kingdom. He wasn't talking about what you and I think church is today and going to a building. It's not the building. The church that Jesus was talking about was spiritual. What did he say? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Flesh is not going to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. You're going to be a spirit. <laughs> Your spirit. Amen. So the flesh is going back to the dust from whence it came, amen. And he said, that which is spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Now guess what? He's giving a hint here. The wind, the wind, the wind, okay? Remember the wind. And thou hearest the sound thereof. Now there's a sound. You got the wind and the sound, all right? These were clues of what was to come when you're born of the spirit, amen. So when you look at that, and, and, and when you look at the, the um, Isaiah, he said, with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? So when you get to, to the day of Pentecost, amen, when, when we look in, in, in the book of Acts, when, when he said, go to Jerusalem and tarry ye there until you be endued from power from on high, amen. And, and, and when you look at that, um, Jesus said, wait for the promise of the Father. What was the promise? It was the Holy Ghost, which saith he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence, that you'll find in, in Acts 1 and, and 4 and 5. And, and, and he said, when they therefore come together, they asked him, saying, wilt thou restore your kingdom at this time to, uh, to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father has put in his own hand, own power, but ye shall receive the power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall re be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. So, and 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 then then um, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, while they was looking at him, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Amen. So, so when you look at that, this was when Jesus came back after his death. Amen. And, and, and showed himself to them and told them to go to Jerusalem and, and, and wait till they be endued with power from on high. Amen. And, and when you go to the, the second chapter of the book of Acts and, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, amen, they were with all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Remember what Jesus said in John 3, 1 through 8, in verse 7, amen, through 4, 5, 6, where he's talking to Nicodemus. He said, 
You'll hear a sound. There'll be a wind. Amen. So he said, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Remember that sound? And he said, there'll be a rushing mighty wind. There's those two Q words, those clue words that he said, and all the house were filled where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues and the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Amen. A new tongue. Amen. Will he speak with this people? Amen. Prophesied in Isaiah. And then when Peter, amen, they said, oh, these, these men are drunk with new wine. Remember the wine? That was the first miracle Jesus, Jesus did. Think about that, that wine, that connection, amen, that spirit, that new wine. And they said, these, these are all drunk with new wine. And Peter, standing up with the 11, amen, verse 14, amen, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you that hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, about 9 a.m. in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Joel 2 and 28, you'll find this, amen, prophesied. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on the, my servants and my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now, we, we've got... When you see this, he, he didn't leave the handmaidens out. That's, a, that's female. And, and when you look at this, um, many are still going by the old law. I'm telling you, folks. We, even Paul said, and this is why they take a lot of their stuff and, 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 and exclude and eliminate a lot of things in, in, in these churches today. They're teaching the old law. And, and when you look at that there, they're telling, you know, Paul said there's neither Jew Gentile, nor bond, nor free, nor rich, nor poor, amen, but we're all one in Christ. So how can we all be one if there's male, female? Now, we still have a fleshly purpose in this life, amen, and, and he said that I will pour out on those days of my spirit, and they, who, who is they? Daughters, sons, amen, <laughs> he said that uh, on all flesh, in those days, and they shall prophesy. Who? They. They. Who are we talking about? He said, on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven. So he included that. He included those. So who, who are we? And, and when, you, when you go to the book of Acts, and you, you say, okay, let me go to Acts, and, 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 and let me just go to 15, um, when, when you look there, um, so this was, this was James. They, they, they came and on the Jews, the, the Holy Ghost was poured out and the, the, there, there was just a commotion here and there was divisions among the, the, the disciples. Amen. And, 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 and they were going back and forth saying, oh, they got to be circumcised. Amen. They got to come under the old law and be circumcised. And and and, and Peter had already been given a, a vision. Amen. With Cornelius. Amen. And and that was in chapter ten. Amen. Of Acts. And God said, "What I've cleansed, don't call unclean." Amen. I didn't I didn't require him to be circumcised. He didn't say that, but that's that's really what's going on here. And 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 Peter's like, "Oh, I'm not going to touch it. It's like, we, we've got our law. I've got to be be." chase to that. And, and so when you look at that, Peter said, hey, you know, the Lord told us that what he cleaned, he gave these, the Holy Ghost, just like he gave us. Amen. And so, so uh, James said, for as much as we've heard that certain, this was, this was the conclusion to the Gentiles, because they were getting told by other disciples, hey, you got to get circumcised. Uh, you you got to come under the law. You got to do this and that. And so he went on to say, he said, for as much as we heard, as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, hey, you, you're not there yet, um, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. So this is James right here saying, hey, Forget about that. Whatever they said, ain't right. 
you're good. So when, when you look at that, certain men which came down, when you go to first, the first uh, verse of 15, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, there you go. You got the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I just read to you earlier the new and living way. Then said he, lo, and this is, you'll find this Hebrews 10, uh, I come to do the will of, O oh God, he hath taken away the first that he may establish the second. Taketh away means taketh away. It doesn't mean blend it or, or, or mix it or modify it. That's done, all right? So you have to understand, we can't be living under the old law. We cannot mix the new wine, amen, put it in an old bottle, amen. It will not work, amen. And, and again, I urge you to go, go look at some of these other videos, amen. So Jesus spoke of the spiritual, amen emphasis amen the kingdom is not of this world he said heavenly places in christ jesus we talk about he said he will build his church amen we have to love not the world uh neither uh the things of the world amen jesus was very very clear on that so these churches and all these 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 ordinances of the old law drug across the grace line today and i am not but let me let me make a point here i am not saying that, that the disciples didn't didn't uh, go to churches and things like that, but you will not find anywhere where anyone brought people to be converted to a church. I don't find it. I've read this New Testament over and over and over. So if you find it, let me know because I'm missing it. it it's not there. Um, and, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That's what people go by. And, and, and these people were already, see, if you, if you want to, if you want to stay in that old law and you want to look at that, you didn't get to go in the temple. You didn't get to go in the tabernacle under the old law without already being circumcised. That's what these, the, the big roar, uproar here was in, in Acts 15. They were saying, you have to be circumcised. If you're going to be part of us, you got to be circumcised. If you're going to come into the temple, you got to be circumcised. You can't come in here. The doorkeeper. <coughs> I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Well, I don't think you would because you had to check for circumcision for anyone that was coming in. Okay, women weren't allowed to go in in that in that day. So anyhow, you don't want the old law. Stop letting people drag you into the old law because that is for our learning of the character of God and how He dealt with the Israel people, not us. We are the Gentiles. We are grafted in. Amen. We have a new and living way. It's in your Bible. Let's, let's not forget that. Amen. So when, when we look at those things, amen, we, we've got to understand and, and, and um, if you want, you can go look at some of the things that, that, I, that I post on Facebook. These, these things are scripture. Um, so anyhow, we, man has made it into corruptible, earthly, not heavenly. Uh, Jesus said you must be born again. We've got to focus. We must be moved from the temporal to the spiritual. Amen. Read John 3, 1 through 8. Read what he told Nicodemus. This comes from Jesus. This wasn't invented by the apostles. This starts at Jesus. Jesus already defined it in John. Amen. So, so when people want to attribute salvation to the apostles, that's where it was enacted in Acts Amen. But not everything in Acts is a commandment. You're reading a story. When I say a story, you're reading history of how they, they was trying to apply the Holy Ghost and how they were trying to set up uh, and, 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 and bring the gospel forward. Um, they didn't get it right. Not everything in there is right. If you started out, you, you, if you started out Acts 15 and 1, you would have went and got circumcised. And then you find out in, in verse 14, you didn't have to be circumcised. So, so now, so you, you can't just take things. That's why he said study to show thyself approved unto God. How do you study? You must lean and be led of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Amen. Because that's who God is going to sanctify. Amen. He said it, it, it searches the 
deep things of God. Amen. So you must walk according to the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, instead of the natural. Be obedient to Christ. Amen. Not to man. Amen. I don't really care what, if Jesus says something here and it's validated here, and we know that sounds like the Jesus we've been reading about, and then you go over here in Acts or you go to Hebrews or Galatians or Ephesians or somewhere else, First Peter, whatever, and you see something that don't really match up to those and the spirit of Jesus, that's man, this is Jesus. So the Lord said they would do greater works, whatever. They're not going to change what Jesus said. It's not going to happen, my friend. If you want to believe that, then you're believing in man again. Paul said, though we are any angel, preach another gospel. Don't believe it. Let him be accursed. So he was letting us know that man is fallible. Jesus is not. Amen. So while they were under that spirit, the Holy Ghost brought this forth. Amen. So be careful. If it doesn't go with the spirit, your spirit has got to agree in the Holy Ghost with the word. Amen. And you are serving Jesus. You're not going to heaven to see Paul and Peter. It might be nice to have an acquaintance with them. Amen. Praise God. But you are going to be with the one that died for you. Amen. If you're not, you're not going to the same heaven I'm going to. And I'm telling you right now, you're not going to heaven at all. Amen. There's another place. Amen. And, and, and so Christ died for us. He gave, he earned reverence. Man did not. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. Amen. So he died for the ungodly. So Romans 8, who shall be able or what shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, which is our Lord and Savior? What shall be able? Would it be Paul? Would it be Peter? No, these guys are helping. They're promoting uh, the gospel. Amen. But I'm telling you, be warned. There are men, he said, be, beware that men are deceiving people. These religions, amen, today that are, are trying to pull you away from God. And they're trying to use the Old Testament, the law, to bind you back over across the grace line. That is, that is ungodly. That is not Christ-like. It is literally antichrist. Amen. And I say that with all boldness in the Holy Ghost. If they are trying to remove you from that communion back to God through Jesus Christ, then they, my friend, are antichrist. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said. Amen. Uh, John 14. Uh, believe in God through me. Amen. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to prepare a mansion for you. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there, ye may be also, amen. Revelations 3 and 11 says, let no man take your crown, amen. It's your place in heaven that he's talking about. Don't let any man deceive you, amen. It's all circulated around man. Man is the one that would deceive you, amen. The only way that we're, we're taken away from God is our own lust, we're drawn, when a man sins, he's drawn away by his own lust. Or we're listening to another who is not Jesus. We're not listening to the Spirit. We're listening to man. Man is trying to draw us away from God. Amen. If they're not uplifting and preaching Jesus, amen. It's not. It's about them and not, not God. Amen. So when, when he said, let no man take your crown. Amen. If Ezekiel 36 and 26, uh, a new heart also will I give. A new spirit will I put in you. I will remove the calloused heart, amen, of your flesh and soften it with my spirit to do my commandments. Amen. This is what we're to do. Amen. To the bride who has made herself ready. You're not getting ready by man. You're not, nobody is, is, is covering for you, my friend. You, you alone, you and Jesus, you will answer to God. No one else will answer 
to God for you. No one is your covering. The covering, the only covering is the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of the lamb, the sacrifice that was given to us. Amen. While we're yet sinners, amen. So the bride of Christ has made herself ready, who has, who, who, who has wisely followed the spirit of Christ, amen. Trimmed her lamp with anointing and has kept herself clean and unspotted even from the flesh and the desires of this world who has not went a whoring after man or tradition who was fallen from grace of Jesus and has bowed only to one true God. That's the bride of Christ. Amen. She will only bow to one true God. Amen. Amen. So for she is more precious, the Bible said, than rubies. Length of days and riches are her ways and, and her ways are pleasant and a path of peace for she is a tree of life to those that lay hold upon her, and happy are they that has retained her. Amen. So that you'll find that Proverbs 3 and 18. Happy are they that have retained her or joined with her. Amen. Have become the bride of Christ. Amen. So I want you to know today, I am very excited. Amen. And what this all means. Amen. And, and, and regardless of what, what history says, regardless of what all these other the, these divergents that that are trying would would try and 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 throw you off of your hope amen i feel jesus i feel him right now i know he is in me amen i feel his spirit amen I, he has not left me comfortless amen i feel him he is alive in me this word my faith my belief is 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 thriving amen he has not left us alone praise god i am so thankful that i i praise him and i thank him that i know in whom i have believed amen it is not me i'm not the one that i didn't learn any language i took french in in, in high school uh, i wasn't good at it I, I probably i could not tell you a sentence in french so I, I promise you i don't know any other languages but i'm telling you when the holy ghost comes on you amen when you begin to glorify him and you begin to speak in that other language amen that he has given you Praise God. You will know that God is, is reaching down from heaven and touching you. Amen. So that is your hope. Amen. Regardless of the detractors, regardless of what people say, they, they you, I don't care if they can back it up. I don't care if they can put a name on, on, on Matthew or Mark or Luke or John's story. Uh, I don't care. It, when I believed it and I applied it, I felt God. And he did what he said he would do. His promise was yea and amen. So that's what I go by. That's how I know, amen, that I can keep going in this. You come too late to tell me, amen, that this doesn't exist or this is just a story, amen. I feel after him that happily I might find him. And he always satisfies, amen. So Revelation 21, amen, and 1 through 27, I encourage you to go read chapter 21, amen. It, it said, a new heaven, a new earth. I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, amen. I'm telling you, that's exciting to me, amen. That tells me that that when, when as, as, as we, as soon as we were born, we begun to go down to, to closer to death, amen, in this life. But there is a hope beyond this life. There is a hope beyond the grave, praise God, amen. And I hope to meet him in the air, amen. Praise God. And I, I just thank you, God, for all that you're doing in my life, in my family's life. Amen. He said, this is your inheritance. Amen. To be with the one that who saved you. Amen. In Jesus' name, praise God. What's your reward going to be, my friend? What is it going to be? According to your works, that's what it's going to be. We have something to do. We, we repent. We get baptized in Jesus' name. And we get the feeling of the Holy Ghost in feeling. Amen. As the scripture said, amen. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. He come to give us life more abundantly, praise God. What's your reward going to be, I said? What is it going to be? According to your works is what it's going to be. Amen. Your thoughts, your focus, your faith, your belief, your obedience in Christ. That's what's going to matter at the end. Not, not serving a man, not serving a church, not serving anything else. I'm not against you going to church. They must be preaching the truth, though. Amen. You've got to write that. Amen. 
Praise God. And I, I am not against those things. I'm telling you that you don't have to go to be saved. You have to assemble yourself together, amen, with, with like precious faith people that, that, that you can be encouraged, amen. We are all brothers, Jesus said. We are all brethren. We are to, to lift one another up. We're to be there for each other. And if we haven't perfected that, we've not perfected the love of God in Christ Jesus. If you have this church that you've got to go to and they're prohibiting you from having a fellowship with, with your brothers or sister because they believe this way or a little bit off here and there. But you guys believe that, 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 that you should be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And live a repentance and a holy life. And if they're telling you, if you got a man that's telling you that you, you shouldn't be associating with it, that's natural. That's carnal. To be carnal-minded is enmity with God. And they do not know the Jesus we are serving today. Amen. I'm telling you that right now. Rebuke that. Rebuke that spirit, praise God. Amen, amen. So, so where you build your treasure, the Bible says, there's your heart going to be. What desire will be solid foundation, built on the foundation of the apostles and Jesus being the authority, the chief cornerstone. We do not build our house on the sand. The apostles laid the foundation by the instructions of who? Jesus. They didn't do it on their own. They are not Jesus. Amen. And I'm so, so proud in many areas that, that Paul does speak so highly of Jesus. That's, that's what he's there for. And I only say that because there are some things that, that, that goes against what, what I see Jesus teaching. Um, and I know Paul wasn't eyewitness to Jesus. He was, he was called by Jesus on the road to Damascus as his, the history goes, the, the writings go. Amen. And, and, and so I don't know. I know one thing that I'm going to stay with what Jesus said. And, and, and again, as I, I alluded to earlier, that if the gospels aren't right, if, if there's some, some problems with the gospels and you want to believe some of those detractors, amen, that we don't know and it's just hearsay and blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and history is saying that. And, and, and what, not till 325 AD that, that, that the, the council met and the Catholics and all this stuff. And they got together and they, they put names to all this, these letters and words and books and stuff. And, and, uh, but I know by experience, by, by the Spirit of God, that he transcends all the unbelief and all the things that could be a little off. He has given me a man of his spirit. I know it happened the way it said. Amen. I can have confidence in that. So again, when you look at those things, you have to stay with Jesus. And, and, and back again, and I'm not trying to belabor the point, but if people are saying that, oh, well, you know, what Paul said here, and you got to obey them to have the rule over you, and you got to do this and that, and you gotta, your a pastor gives an account for you, that is not Jesus. That is not what Jesus brought me. That is not what I'm reading in the, in, the, in the Gospels. That doesn't even make sense to me. If Jesus came and he tore that, that middle wall partition in half and his blood brought me back to God in communion with him, why do I need a man? I'm not going back to the priesthood. That, that makes sense to me. I don't know how it doesn't with anyone. The Holy Ghost says when he has come, he will glorify me. There will no flesh glory in his presence. Why would I go back to a man when God delivered me from that priesthood? He delivered you from the priesthood. There's no man gonna be over you. We've read, amen, we, we, we've read 1 John 2, uh, and I'm gonna read it again. I, I, you, you go back to, to uh, what we, what we uh, talked about before, but, but I'm gonna read it here just, just, just to cover it. Amen. First John 2, 1. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And they, uh, if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Who do we go to? We go to a priest? No, we don't go to a priest. Amen. And 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins. He is. Who? Jesus. Jesus Christ the righteous. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. And hereby, we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Whose commandments? The pastors? No, Jesus Christ. 
Friends, don't be deceived. Man, 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 man. All through the scripture, Jesus warns, don't be deceived by man. That's not going to work for us. He that saith know him keepeth not his commandments as a liar. Amen. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word and him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Amen. So again, here we are. Um. Let me, let me find the other, again. Now we beseech you, 2 Thessalonians, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Amen. So I want you to know we have got to stay with Jesus. Amen. The servant, he said, is not greater than his master. And, and, and if you got anybody that's contending and saying, oh, well, it says obey them that have the rule over you. And it says that we got we to gotta serve man and, 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 and listen to some of the other stuff. But I'm telling you, scripture does not bear that out as a whole. It does not meet the two immutable things. Amen. And, and go back to, to, I think, the second one. Amen. Go back and listen to those. I bring that out. Amen. Jesus said when the promise, the spirit... Or the teacher, he will lead you. I am here teaching you now in flesh. But when I leave, Jesus said, the Father will send the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, in my name. He will lead and guide you into all truth, the Spirit of truth. Think not what you shall say, because the Holy Ghost will give you what you should say in the time that is needed. So, my friend, it's all over the pages of the new covenant, amen, that we are to be taught. We are to be directed by the Holy Ghost, not man. Now we can teach each other. We can, we can help and comfort one another through the Holy Ghost. There, there's not a, not a separation of ministry and those with the Holy Ghost. And we've talked about it previously, that there's, there's not one spirit that's given to the ministry and one spirit that's given to the saints. We all are commissioned to bring forth this gospel. Amen. The apostles were different. They were the eyewitnesses. This was the start of the foundation. They had a particular purpose. Beyond that, we are all the same. We are all brethren, Jesus said. Even they were all brethren. But the difference were is they were eyewitnesses to his teaching of both his resurrection and his return. Amen. So many will come in my name, he said. He said, think not what to say because the Holy Ghost will give it to you and, and, and say it when it's needed. Many will come in my name and deceive many. Understand the warnings. Many will try to take you back to the flesh. Remember what Paul said? Demas, having loved this present world, has forsaken me. Amen. He, they will try to take you back to the law. They will try to bind you as, as Jesus talked about the Pharisees and the scribes in, 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 in chapter 23 in Matthew and, and, and other areas through, through there where he constantly said, hypocrites, hypocrites, hypocrites. Amen. You can pass land and sea to make one proselyte. Amen. When he's converted, you make him a twofold child of hell more than you yourselves. Amen. Over and over and over and over, Jesus has, has, has struck them down because of their religion and because of their flesh and their law that Jesus has set us free from. Amen. And ha have you follow, amen, them and not the spirit. Remember Romans 8 and 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Praise God. 
my sheep, he said, hear my voice and they follow me and, 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 and I give them eternal life and no man shall pluck them out of my hand. Did he say Satan? No. Folks, you got to understand, man, 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 man is the one that's trying to pull us away. And, and, and Satan works and uses man to do so. Amen. Man will twist. He will rest, the Bible says, the scriptures. Amen. To their own destruction. They follow Baal and Balaam to give into man's voice and the lust of their flesh, being led away with error of the wicked and fall from grace and the knowledge of him who has called them out in a way to become spiritual minded, not serving men as men pleasers. Amen. He said, be not man pleasers, but the one true God as it was from the beginning. Man is no substitute for Jesus. Amen. We are an extension of the message. We are not gods. We are not Jesus. We represent Jesus. And there are, there are whole religions out there today saying, I'm a little God. I got his spirit. I'm him. You're not him. You, you were born by flesh. You had a father, earthly father. You had an earthly mother. You were not born by God. You were not meant to be him. We are a representation of him. We are an ambassador to Christ. Amen. We represent him. We are not him. Amen. Beginning man is no substitute for Jesus. Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name given under heaven among men where we might be saved. Amen. He said, so finally in Colossians, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. To say, man, pastor, did it give any, any, any office? No, it didn't because there is no office. Did it say by Peter, by Paul, amen, by Moses, by Abraham? If you want, if you want Moses, that's the law. If you want man, that's the law. And it said in, in that it was weak, it could not forgive sins. Your sins aren't forgiven under the law. Only truth and grace came by Jesus Christ. Grace is the only thing that's going to move your sins out. Amen. So it's not David and it's not any man. So I just, I just admonish you today that if you are, are, are serving man, if you, if you feel and, and you're, you're being taught that, that man is your covering and man is, is going to, going to uh, help sustain you, my friend, you, you, it's Jesus. Amen. And, and, and God, I just pray this morning that, that, that your word, God, would go out, return not void, God. Lord, that your word, God, would be, be taught and, and in truth, God. And if we don't love the truth, God, we're going to be damned, Lord. And I just pray right now, God, to the listeners, their families, God, in these, this, these, these days coming, Lord, that, that may get very rough, God. But, but God, we have our hope in you, God. It's not in man. Amen. We're, we're not believing in chariots. We're not believing in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. It's not, amen, in anything else. And not of this world, God, but it is of you, your name, God. We praise you right now. And God, I, I send prayers right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would move, you would open minds, you would enlighten folks through your word. God, you would washing and regeneration of your word, God. And, and God, that you would just turn on some lights, God, and you would let people see, God, that there's no way we're going to make it without having you our number one, God. And Lord, we can't make it through man, but God, only through your spirit, God, and to obedience, in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank you for listening. Amen. Jesus Name Ministries. Amen. I appreciate y'all. And uh, let's let's hook up sometime and, and, and get together and, and have some fellowship in Jesus' name.